Hello everyone, welcome to this property market update for Bundaberg. We're going to be doing an update from the September to December period in 2022 and unpack what's been going on in this marketplace. I know it's been a very popular marketplace, particularly on a lot of property investor forums that I'm a part of. It's been very polarized in the media as being a destination area where many interstate home buyers are looking to live as well. So let's unpack the data to see what's been really going on here in this marketplace so that then you can go and make an informed decision if you're currently looking to buy a house or investment property. Let's dive in guys. <clears throat> For those that don't know me, my name is Troy Simbassini and I am the owner and lead buyers agent for Capricorn Life Buyers Agency. It's one of our life buyers brands uh, located in central Queensland. We provide an area specialist service model to Rockhampton, Mackay and Bundaberg. And we're representing the buying side of the transaction exclusively and who we're generally helping in and around the area, the struggling home buyers, investors, you know, interstate buyers and those that are generally geographically challenged you can check us out on our socials visit us on our website and go from there if you want to find out a little bit more about who we are and what we do but we do buy a lot of real estate in Bundaberg and it's been a really good place to invest and buy property uh, we found over the last 24 months and yeah we've really had a really good fun in buying in the area I don't want to keep you guys too long here as I troll through the data. I suppose the overall goal is to break down really at a high level what's going on on the supply side and what's going on on the demand side. And then from there we can figure out, you know, what are the trends and what are some of the gold nuggets we can extract out of this marketplace to help guide our approach whether we're in the market to buy a house right now or an investment so you can become more armed with information to navigate this marketplace but those are all the data points we're going to hit today you know find out what's happening with the median price have a look at you know the stock levels and listing volumes have a look at what's been happening on the demand side with days on market auction clearance rates and absorption rates we're also going to look at the rental side of Bundaberg and what's been happening there as well around vacancy rates and what's been happening with the median um, rental price and then we're going to take a look at the supply pipeline as well and then finish off with some summary and trends. Alright guys, I'm keen to get it going. So if we started off by looking at what's been happening with the median price over the last three months. Uh, in and around Bundaberg and as we can see here the median house price in Bundaberg as of December 2022 is currently 524,000 and it's actually up from 507,000 in September 2022 and the median house price has essentially grown by 3.3% in the last month. So Bundaberg is a rising property market here guys. Uh, it's not like what we've seen in the capital cities that are going through a retraction or a slowdown. We always have to remember that there are markets within markets across Australia and Bundaberg appears to be one of those markets that's uh, moving forward, uh, which is really great for the area. Uh, we've seen a steep incline there obviously over the last, you know, 24 months and yeah, property prices just appear to be growing in the area. We've seen a lot of demand, particularly my office, from interstate buyers, home buyers looking to move into the area. There's a lot of big infrastructure project uh, projects in the area as well. So a lot of people are demanding housing, either whether it's rental or property. And yeah, a, a lot of people are really sort of uh, interested in, in the lifestyle drivers in and around Bundaberg, particularly on the coastline, uh, Inns Park, you know, Bagara. Burnet Heads are all seem to be really popular places for uh, families and we've also seen a bit of a trend in Bundaberg as well when it comes to uh, people moving into the area from uh, actually a lot from the Sunshine Coast and the Gold Coast. So I think what's happened, what those places have been hit really hard by interstate migration and then that's pushing people further north into 
these smaller regional hubs like Harvey Bay and Bundaberg, and they seem to be yeah um, on the end of a chain reaction in terms of migration of population. So that's very interesting. Uh, I always say uh, I don't have a crystal ball as to sort of where this you know median house price is going to go, but we're going to be unpacking uh, the supply side uh, very shortly. We're going to be unpacking the demand side. So once we sort of look at those two metrics, it's probably really going to give us uh, an idea on where this median house price might lead, you know, going forward. But <clears throat> overall, yeah, five hundred and twenty-four thousand dollars. If you actually did benchmark that against, let's say, the Sunshine Coast, the Gold Coast, or Brisbane for that matter, uh, it is still very much an affordable property market. Uh, in and around Bundaberg. Let's have a look at what's been happening now on the supply side because we've obviously seen that median house price surge along there over the last three months and you know unpacking what's happening on the supply side might you know just give us um, enough insight as to why that median house price is going uh, growing and where that median house price might, might be likely to go uh, going forward as well. But if we had a look at just the overall listing volumes um, over you know the last three months in particular, but we can see here that stock levels are currently sitting at 0.2%, which means that there are approximately 123 houses that were listed for sale in December, and it's been the lowest it's been over a two-year or slash 24-month period. So that's very interesting, guys. So the December listing volume is, you know, you know, down by the best part of, I'd probably say, 20 or 30 properties, and it's the lowest it's been uh, over the last two years. And we've had, a, obviously, a rising property market over the last three years, and now we're starting to see, you know, a, a real tightening of, you know, listing volumes, and that in turn is translating potentially now into, you know, uh, this median house price surging. Are long, but if you look at it, we had you know the best part of over the last three months listing volumes sort of drop. I'd probably say by the best part of you know 30 to 40 properties um, coming online each month. If we were to sort of backdate that from let's say August to uh, around May, so they sort of on average sat around you know 200 listings per month. Whereas now they're more or less sitting around, you know, 150 per month over the last three months, and then now in December, sorry, uh, you know, as low as 123 houses. <clears throat> Don't, in terms of December, December is probably always a period where listing volumes do um, fall off a cliff uh, a little bit generally, only because around, you know, the Christmas holiday period, a lot of people put uh, selling their houses on hold. So there is a natural tapering off there of listing volume in and around <clears throat> that, you know, uh, festive period. So, you know, we could, you know, if we sort of factored that in, I reckon most likely that, you know, the listing volume maybe on average sits at around that, you know, 150, particularly for the last, you know, three months since September. But if we were to look at that listing volume and benchmark it against the population base, for uh, you know Bundaberg itself, you know to have the best part of only 150 properties listed for sale, you know at any given month, you know it's it's still a really low um, supply um, number for a population center of its size. So the overall supply is tightening in Bundaberg, and it's been uh, certainly reducing uh, over the last you know four months from what it was. You know, you know, in the previous quarter. So very interesting here, guys, what's been happening on the supply side in Bundaberg. If we had a look at the inventory side or the inventory pool uh, in Bundaberg, and we can sort of see here that the inventory levels sit well below one month after, you know, a 24-month period, uh, 24 period of tightening. And, and look at that graph, guys. It's just a graph that you know, is just tightening, tightening, and tightening, and now sitting, you know, at a point in time where Bundaberg itself as a whole has only around two weeks worth of supply, you know, based on its current velocity uh, of listings. Uh, so, yeah, from a supply point of view overall, that is extremely low levels of supply. And if you were to look at it, like if 
the easiest probably way to explain it is consider it that you know you own uh, a pie shop right and you've been stacking your fridge every month with 150 you know uh, coke uh, coke cans and every month you know you know the first month someone comes in and buys 50 the second month someone comes in and buys 70 the third month someone comes in and buys 80 the fourth month someone comes in and buys 90 but you're always currently supplying only around 150 cokes a month and you can see that then over time how your inventory level of cokes will drop you know um, to uh, certainly a really low point uh, where you won't have enough to you know sustain that demand over a longer term so you adjust your supply in order to cater for that demand so we've obviously seen here these inventory levels do exactly that where you know it's based on the current velocity of listings and then we might have you know extremely high levels of demand and we'll get to that in a sec and it's just causing this inventory level to just reduce and reduce over time but for Bundaberg to only have the best part of two weeks worth of supply that's extremely grim and we know that if if demand exceeds supply in any marketplace that's economic 101 uh, you're gonna get price appreciation slash capital growth and you're always probably going to be in a situation where there are multiple bidders uh, per property and we're still seeing that in Bundaberg as well we we'll put a couple of properties on the contract um, during the November and December period and we were in situations where there were multiple bidders as well so yeah it is certainly a market where supply is on the lower end and it's most likely causing that median house price as we've seen to continue to surge along but we're going to peek ahead over now into the demand side to really unpack then um, why this uh, you know inventory um, inventory levels are at an all-time low so let's have a look at what's been happening on the demand side we've seen you know those listing volumes and the rolling inventory pool you know look rather grim there from the supply side but if we were to sort of have a look and unpack what's happening on the demand side uh, it'll really give us a grips on what's really happening in this marketplace uh, we use days on market as one of the key metrics to measure demand and all days on market is is basically for every property that comes on the market this is how many days it takes to sell and that's a good metric to measure whether a market is hot or cold um, you know in terms of how quickly a property uh, sells and if we were to look at you know Bundaberg's December days on market and it sits at uh, 57 and it's actually the highest it's been in the last four months and in addition to that we've also seen vendor discounting appear to be stabilizing around under that three percent so if we were to look at this days on market data what is that telling us overall so probably we can see here from basically November back to I'd probably say around July days on markets sat on average around that 50 days and there's been a slight jump in December up to around 57 so if you were to look at that I suppose overall average of around 50 days it's yeah that means that properties are probably taking I'd probably say the best part of four or five weeks to sell on average and that's causing you know this days on market uh, figure to come back at around 50 and if we were to sort of look at you know 50 days overall um, as a metric uh, there's obviously other markets uh, in and around uh, central Queensland and North Queensland that are probably a little bit hotter in terms of you know the days on market uh, metric um, particularly Townsville Cairns is a bit lower and Rockhampton also I think Bundaberg would be the highest have the highest days on market when you know um, compared to those other regional hubs but Bundaberg is, is a weird place um, and for those that aren't familiar with you Bundaberg is a bit of a weird place where there is a lot of old and established stock uh, particularly those cottages and older very older Queenslanders in and around the inner middle ring of Bundaberg uh, both on the south uh, southeast side and also uh, the northeast side where these older uh, properties they generally most of them sit in flood zones and these properties are uh, obviously take a, a lot longer to sell than your average property let's say in Bugara 
or at Ends Park where they just move really quickly. Uh, so I'd probably say that there'd be certain suburbs in Bogar, particularly the uh, in Bundaberg, particularly the ones on the coast where properties are selling very quickly, and they probably on average are sitting at around that 30 days where you know properties are selling within the first week in these really desirable beachside suburbs um, in Bundaberg. But then there are you know these older established properties that are sit in the inner middle ring and around the flood zone around the um, river that is dragging up you know the overall you know days on market so if you are potentially an investor in the area you know you probably figure out pretty quickly what are some of the more desirable parts of Bundaberg once you look at each of them individually and look at their days on market you know because I'd probably say all of the intermittent ring subs that have flood affected uh, areas are taking a lot longer to sell and it's skewing this data here slightly but overall like if we were to look at you know 50 as an average I'd probably say that's a pretty healthy market and I'd say there'd be suburbs within that where properties are selling still within the first week and there are properties selling you know around that uh, you know six week mark and it's creating this average of around 50 days but yeah overall demand uh, is healthy from a days on market point of view in and around Bundaberg. For those that you know have seen my other market updates know that I generally don't read too much into uh, regional auctions because uh, you know, generally in, in regional areas, they're not a, a really good metric to use uh, in terms of temp checking a market like major capital cities. Uh, however, you know, I always still like to analyze what's going on there because we might be able to extract, you know, some gold nuggets to really help guide our uh, strategy and approach to buying property uh, in the area. But if we looked at what's been happening on the you know auction side in Bundaberg, we can sort of see here that auction clearance rates are averaging around 30% in the last six months, which is very healthy for a regional property market. And that's very true, very true. So if we even just benchmark this average of around 30% uh, to Rockhampton, to let's say Townsville or Cairns, uh, they on average sit you know 10% or lower. And here we have you know. Um, Bundaberg sitting around an average of 30% in the last six months just to, just shows that this uh, auction market is very healthy and that's really interesting uh, considering that the we've seen properties in the area they sort of vary that are going to auction generally um, from you know your lavish beachside mansions in and around Bagara to your you know flood affected properties in and around the inner middle ring to some family homes in and around suburbia and most of the properties that are going to auction are generally unique in their own way and agents are finding it a little bit difficult to figure out what it might be worth so they you know as a strategy go to auction rather than you know put a price tag on it and list it on realestate.com or domain but yeah very very healthy uh, overall auction clearance rate here so it's telling me that you know demand you know is really really strong and yeah for a regional market like Bundaberg to to be performing at around 30% I think that's rather impressive and if we looked at the auction volume we probably can see here that you know over the last three months we've had roughly I'd say close to 20 auctions overall so 30% of those uh, auctions have cleared so what 20% of 20 overall what's that probably around eight. eight eight properties have have sold overall at auction in you know the last you know three months and then over the last six months you know 30% uh, as an average which is really really good so take this uh, this data here as you know being a you know very good for a uh, regional market and as i said when you benchmark it against these other regional hub bundaberg certainly outperforms in terms of what's happening in around here with the auction market but also i'd like to you know can quickly congratulate the agents in the area that are you know um leading these auctions you know they appear to be doing a good job whether it's through the advertising or taking the right properties to these auctions because these uh volumes and these uh, associated uh, clearance rates are really good 
for my regional hub. The last demand side metric we like to look at is the overall absorption rate. And this absorption rate gives us great insight and fact as to what's happening overall on the demand side. And as we can sort of see here, that Bundaberg is experiencing an extremely high absorption rate of 94%. 94%, that's, that's fantastic, uh, from the September to December period. And this is actually up from 77% during May to August. So we've actually seen demand increase uh, for the last three months, you know, from September to December, from May to August. And that increase from 77 to 94, if we were to actually look at a correlation between that jump from 77 to 94 versus, you know, the 3% increase in the median house price, there is a lot of correlation there. So when demand increases, we certainly see that median house price uh, surge along, particularly if that supply remains balanced in terms of the current velocities and we've certainly seen the average velocities sort of remain the same they haven't really increased but what that tells us overall is that yeah basically for every property that goes onto the marketplace you know 94 percent of those properties sell you know just like you know the coke analogy uh, ha having the pie shop you know 90 percent of the cokes uh, sell each month and, and that's really impressive uh, you know, for any market, uh, if we were to benchmark that against what's happening in, in the other regional hubs, Cairns, for example, this is a much higher absorption rate than Cairns, this is a much higher absorption rate than Townsville, this is a much higher absorption rate than what's happening around the Sundays, and it's probably about the same as Rockhampton. In fact, Rockhampton and Bundaberg are having extremely high absorption rates. So if you are an investor, we can sort of see here that demand certainly is outstripping supply, so there's still a great entry point to come into a marketplace and make money where demand exceeds supply. So that means, you know, one only one thing can happen: capital appreciation, because you're always going to be in a situation where multiple bidders are going to be per property, and that's going to in turn drive up, you know, prices. And if you were a home buyer, this is pretty concerning. So if you're a home buyer, I wouldn't be sitting on the sidelines. If, if I'm a home buyer right now and I've got a pre-approval or I'm in the process of getting a pre-approval, I would get active right away. I wouldn't be sitting on my heels waiting to see what's going to be happening in the marketplace. You probably have to move very quickly now in the short term because if the absorption remain, rates remain this high, that we're going to start to see that median house price jump even more. And you don't want to be in a situation you know, in three months with a median house price increases by another 3% because it's going to cost you another 3% to get into the property that you potentially want rather than wait. So that's certainly what I'd be doing uh, in and around the area for sure. All right, let's poke ahead over and look at what's been happening on the rental side. I know there's a lot of investors that are you know, really keen on understanding what's going on here in terms of rental trends uh, to sort of see what maybe type of yields they could you know, expect. And there are also a lot of you know home buyers that come into this marketplace initially and rent first before they buy. So it's good for them to sort of understand what's happening on the rental side as well. But we can sort of see here that the median rent uh, currently sits at $402 per week for houses in Bundaberg. And it's actually a $10 increase uh, or a 2.5% increase uh, since September 2022. So over the last you know three four months rents are rising so we're in a market where you know the median rent overall is rising and we can probably see here if like based on this graph alone that rents have been rising for you know the best part of the last 24 months now and yields are probably getting really really attractive and when we when we see you know rents rising we, we probably know straight away that supply is tightening and, and demand is rather high so when supply is low demand is high it starts to put you know downward pressure on stock and then that in turn is, you know people are making market-based adjustments uh, to their rents and in turn that grows over time so yeah the best part of ten dollars it's increased uh, in the last you know three months four months and if you were to extrapolate that out over a 12 month period you're on average, your rents increase roughly around $40 a 
a year. So yeah, really good returns if you are an investor, knowing that you could, you know, at the end of a 12-month lease, um, jack up your rents by an extra, you know, forty dollars. Not so good for someone that, you know, is on the other end of that stick who isn't a renter. You know, you obviously then have to dip into your back pocket, you know, for an extra forty dollars a week to put a, keep a roof over your head. Uh, but nonetheless, this is what's happening in and around the property market in terms of rentals. No one, as I said, has a crystal ball as to where this is going to go. Uh, the only thing that could, you know, relieve the market is either a lot of new supply or if demand really uh, starts to fall away, then we'll start to see, you know, uh, uh, the median rent stabilise or start to go through uh, retraction and we'll look at the supply pipeline soon as to sort of where that uh, is going and on what that looks like uh, for Bundaberg but so far yeah we're in a rising um, market here when it comes to rents and yeah four hundred and two dollars a week uh, is the average uh, or the median uh, rent for houses in Bundaberg and if we were to look at that midpoint median is always the midpoint so there'd be properties that would be renting for you know five hundred you know uh, dollars a week plus and probably as low as you know three hundred and it's trading that midpoint of around four hundred you know a few of the properties that we bought over the last three months we bought a we bought a four better two bar two car on a decent sized block of land on the inner north of uh, Bundaberg and you know it rented for five hundred and sixty dollars a week you know so you know we're on the upper end of you know the the rents in town. And yeah, but on average, you can get around that 400, um, you know, dollar uh, per week uh, rents. But on average, I'd probably say anything in the sub 400k in terms of house prices, your yields are probably looking at around that five, six percent. So uh, very much in positive cash flow territory. Uh, if you bought an investment in the sub, you know, uh, $400,000 market in and around Bundaberg when these average median rents are this high. So we've seen that median rent, you know, grow by the best part of ten dollars over the last uh, four months, and then if you extrapolate that out over a twelve-month period, you know, your rents increase by forty dollars a year. And you know, the main reason why rents tend to grow is because demand is high, but also supply is low. And if we were to look at, you know, supply, we can sort of see here that the vacancy rates currently sit at one point one percent and has been, you know, on the incline for the last four months. So this is quite interesting actually because we've seen that median rent grow over the last four months but you know we've seen this graph here tell us that vacancy rates are going up but if you looked at it like that is a really shallow sample pool overall like it's been inclining over the last four months but you know 30 35 has jumped to 55 so there's been only a 20 um, on average increase in you know, velocity of listings or that new supply. But if you looked at it overall versus the demand side for it to you know increase by an extra 20, that probably isn't enough to move the dial there or to change you know the median rental growth in the area. But yeah, very interesting trend this one, like really trending. Uh, below 1% for a, a long period of time and this is what's really got a lot of investors interested in is these extremely low vacancy rates. It's obviously causing a, a bit of a headache for a lot of people uh, that are moving into the area trying to you know, get uh, a rental property because they're about to start work in the new year or they're in town for you know, in the short or medium term to do uh, let's say a large infrastructure project. So it creates a, uh, creating a lot of issues, uh, you know, with the supply side, you know, when, you know, the listings sit well below, you know, 1%. And to have a population base of, you know, close to 80,000 people in and around Bundaberg to only have the best part of, you know, 50 properties for uh, rent in the December period, and on average around that 40 or 35 for the last four month period, uh, in terms of supply, yeah, it's not that not that high at all. Like that 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 level of supply is still not enough to sustain the demand. And even though we've seen this incline, um, that's still not enough to sustain demand. And prices are continuing to rise. 
Uh, probably something to watch though, like we've seen the steep incline over the last, you know, three or four months uh, come into effect. Uh, I don't know off the top of my head if there, let's say, was new supply coming to the marketplace from memory. Like there's still a lot of new supply coming into the marketplace, particularly house and land packages um, on the East Coast and also on the Inner East. These are house and land packages, but house and land packages naturally don't come online as quickly. And Bundaberg's pretty weird that they don't have a lot of medium density in and around the CBD because uh, it's mainly all flood affected. So most of the medium density property gets built sort of on the fringe of uh, some of the suburban areas on the uh, southeast corridor and or uh, on the coastline around, you know, Bagara, mostly where a lot of the medium density, um, you know, supply is coming into the marketplace. So then uh, I don't know off the top of my head if I've seen anything pop up in and around uh, Bagara or the East Coast from memory because that could have been uh, what stimulated this marketplace with a little bit of supply. Like let's say uh, a block of units come online with around 10 available units and that stimulated the market with this additional supply. But I can't uh, recall from memories, you know, seeing any new supply in and around that pipeline, uh, in and around that east coast of Bundaberg, nor in and around the Inner Middle Ring. And then naturally these uh, house and land packages don't come onto the marketplace, you know, as quick uh, as you know, as what we've seen here with an increase of around you know 20 on average uh, new supply. It just could be one of those things uh, as well coming towards the back end of the year. Supply probably might naturally increase because people uh, may be moving out of the area and moving to somewhere else so properties become a bit more uh, available and vacant and it's causing that short-term supply. But this will be something we'll be monitoring certainly over the next three months. I'm doing another market update around uh, March uh, once we start to have some historical data to work with but if we're starting to see like let's say this incline continue then we might know that you know the rental markets potentially peaking uh, in Bundaberg but yeah some to watch guys but vacancy rates extremely low um, don't know too much about what's happening in terms of new supply and we'll get to that in a sec and demand appears to be still very high So overall, guys, we've seen supply on the sales side, you know, simply are not enough to sustain that demand. So we're seeing a growth in that median house price. And on the rental side, we're seeing supply not enough to sustain demand also. And we've seen a growth in that median rent. So there are two ways that the market could either slow down or cool on the rental side or the buying side is that if there is a if there is a whole bunch of new supply number one and that stimulates the marketplace and then caters for that demand so that's one way that we could probably see a slowdown in that median house price and also in that median rent is the market be injected with a whole bunch of new supply and that demand is met and then the market starts to stabilize balance and potentially even go backwards if supply exceeds the demand. So that's number one. And then number two, the, we'll probably see the median house price slow down and the median rent slow down if demand uh, dries up or tapers off significantly. And one of the things to look at if you're an investor or you're a home buyer and you want to figure out if demand's going to be strong going forward is mainly look at the macro uh, fundamentals around you know uh, infrastructure spend if there's a lot of infrastructure spend that means there are a lot of jobs and a lot of inbound um, workers so that's going to put down with pressure on houses and rental supply uh, population movements if a lot of people are still moving into the area uh, that's also going to you know continue to create uh, demand uh, affordability lifestyle these are all other sort of uh, key drivers to demand as well so Providing that they all sort of stack up, you're most likely going to see, you know, demand remained high. Uh, but if we were to look at the first thing around supply and if supply, or in future supply is enough to take the heat out of the rental market and the sales market, we can sort of see here that, 
you know, for Bundaberg, uh, there's been a total of 179 building approvals uh, for the year to date uh, in terms of yeah, 2022 to 2023 uh, financial year and currently trending low relative to previous years. So, yeah, if we looked at that graph um, this year in terms of year to date spend, in terms of our future supply is very, very low and it's probably, yeah, you know, the best part of, you know, four... Hundred, I'd say, or so approvals lower. Um, I'm not really concerned about uh, the year to date spend. I'm more concerned about what's happened over the 2021, 2022 period because we generally know that with supply, it takes a, a, a normally a couple of years before it comes into the marketplace. Developers are generally getting, you know, uh, billing approvals putting through development applications, mobilizing finance and going through construction, and then new supply comes into the marketplace after, you know, a two or three year period. And yeah, that's why I'm not really concerned about what's happening uh, right now, because what's happening right now will generally come onto the marketplace in uh, three years time. So around that, you know, 2025, uh, if we were to look at, yeah, what's happening in 2021 to 2022, uh, we can see here that that's really, really high in terms of those Billing approvals, and that's really good. So uh, we might start to see a marketplace here be stimulated with a lot of new supply. Um, probably this year, I'd probably say towards the back end of uh, 2023 and early 2024, uh, because we've had these really high levels of approvals, you know, during that 2021 to 2022 period, uh, and then that's really good. So that might take a bit of that short term. Uh, pressure out of you know that meet that growing median house price and then that growing uh, median rent. So uh, I'd probably say you know the market is probably likely to still move along in the short term, probably until 2024, uh, before we probably start to see an injection of supply here. Uh, and it's probably a bit concerning knowing that spend is pretty low in the financial year to date because. You know, if demand remains high still going forward, then you know history is probably likely to repeat itself. We're probably going to see the same thing play out in 25, uh, 2025 going forward if this you know supply pipeline in terms of approvals now remain low. So Bundaberg might be always in this weird state of fluctuations between you know uh, supply and demand, and it's just never really enough to you know to create a marketplace there that's stable, uh, one always exceeds the other. So Bundaberg might be this sort of weird market that goes up and down. But overall, yeah, this year, year to date spend low, uh, the 2021, 2022 period high. So I'm guessing we're going to see a lot of this new supply coming to the pipeline soon. And yeah, that might be a, a good thing for those that are you know, looking for additional options to buy, particularly house and land packages, and those that might be, you know, interested in renting as well, we might start to see some median density um, come into the marketplace as well, apartment unit, townhouses, to just create, um, you know, additional stock and alternatives to to the marketplace. But yeah, overall, guys, future supply, um, yeah, it's a bit of a concern, uh, but it's good knowing that, you know, the previous two years, there's been a healthy level of approval. So, we might to start to see the market, you know, be injected with some supply and um, some heat taken out of this marketplace. So yeah, that could have been a lot to swallow for someone that's not trolling through data like what we do, and for someone that yeah doesn't normally look at data to temp check and diagnose marketplaces. But yeah, I hope that's given you guys some good insight. But if I were to just give you some high level takeaways so that you can just take that to put into the back pocket because that was a lot to swallow and then help. Use that to help you navigate the marketplace, whether you you know you plan to buy your next home or investment property. You know, I think the first thing is around you know the median house price. We've certainly seen that surge along over the last three months um, and grow by the best part of three percent. So it's something to be mindful of, guys. Particularly if you're someone that was sitting on the sideline, you know, wasn't too sure as to what's going on. You certainly know now that if you waited the last three months. Uh, it's going to cost you an extra 3% to, to buy your next home or investment. And if you plan on waiting even more, it might cost you another 3% potentially in the next quarter. And yeah, you know, 6% over, you know, the last, 
in a six to eight months is not a good thing. You you probably could have been six percent up front rather than you know costing you an additional six percent to get in. So something to be mindful there, guys, of you know monitoring that median house price. Um, what's causing that median house price you know to surge along is the demand and supply side. And key takeaway from the supply side is that we've seen that those current listing volumes uh, appear to you know not be sustaining the current levels of demand and you know, that inventory um, levels have been you know tightening and that's certainly demonstrated the fact that current listing volumes is just not enough to sustain that demand because that graft is just like a big snake it's just tightened and tightened and tightened um, so yeah overall supply is very very low uh, demand, you know, we've seen those extremely high absorption rates and low days on markets. So, mean house price growing, and that's as a result of low supply and high demand in Bundaberg. If we were to look at what's happened on the rental side, key takeaway is that uh, vacancy rates are still very low relative to market size. So, sitting around that 1.1% is still very low despite the slight incline, and you know, we're probably going to see. Prices uh, continuing to surge along uh, as you know the supply pipeline is very low. So similarly, uh, you know to the median house price, you know median rents are probably going to grow because demand is you know still exceeding supply in Bundaberg, and that's a key takeaway that you should remember, particularly if you plan on renting a property anytime soon, or if you plan on investing. You know you're certainly going to get good returns as the rental market is still very hot, and from a supply point of view, guys, new supply, we've seen those low levels of billing approvals in terms of the financial year to date, and that's pretty concerning, uh, knowing that you know in three or four years' time, we might be um, in a situation where history is likely to repeat itself, but the good thing is, is that we've seen, uh, certainly, you know, the 2021 period and 2022 period, those high levels of uh, building approvals and we might start to see that uh, the marketplace be stimulated with new supply in and around that you know 2024 period maybe later on uh, this year as well but saying that will that be enough to take uh, the hit out of the market or move the dial um, yeah that's yet to be seen and I'm really keen um, to get to that point in time and unpa unpack um, if that's moved the dial that's for sure but yeah, overall, guys, that's sort of some of the key takeaways. I hope that's really helped you guys. Um, if you do have any questions uh, pertaining to you know what was presented today, feel free to reach out. You know, always happy to have a have a chat and unpack this together. Leave a comment in the comment section, and, or you know, find us on our socials or send me an email. Book in a time and we can unpack this all together. Hey guys, thank you. One last plug here, guys. So again, my name is Troy Simbassini. I am the owner of uh, Capricorn Life Buyers Agency. We work exclusively for property buyers. We provide a free for service to represent buyers exclusively, and we're generally helping you know uh, those type of clients uh, there. Feel free to reach out to us on our socials, visit us on our website, or book in a time to have a chat. More than uh, happy to unpack all of this together and maybe potentially help you with your next home or investment. Thank you, guys.